Hey everyone, Alex Ionescu here. Welcome to Investor's Guide to the Galaxy. Cost of energy will go to zero. Shamat Paliapatia on energy interview with Lex Friedman. Nighttime solar technology can now deliver power in the dark. Harvesting energy with space solar panels could power Earth 24-7. Let's dive right into it. Tesla stock price today down 1.63%. Year to date down 55%. BYD stock down 0.9% today, year to date down 6%. Let's listen to Chamat Paliapatia talk about the energy cost of today. He basically is saying that energy costs for homes in America who use solar panels is effectively zero. Let's hear him out. There's like a million things to ask. I almost don't want to get distracted by the marginal cost of energy going to zero because I, I have no idea what you're talking about that is fascinating. Can I give you the 30 seconds? Sure. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. So if you look inside of the two most progressive states, the three most progressive states, New York, California, and Massachusetts, a lot of left-leaning folks, a lot of people who believe in climate science and climate change, the energy costs in those three states are the worst they are in the entire country. And energy is compounding at three to 4% per annum. So every decade to 15 years, energy costs in these states double. In some cases and in some months, our energy costs are increasing by 11% a month. But the ability to actually generate energy is now effectively zero. The cost per kilowatt hour to put a solar panel on your roof and a battery wall inside your garage, it's the cheapest it's ever been. They're, these things are the most efficient they, they've ever been. And so to acquire energy from the sun and store it for your use later on, literally is a zero cost proposition. So what's, how do you explain the gap between the cost going Great up? question. So this is the other side of regulatory capture, right? You know, we all fight to build monopolies. While there are monopolies hiding in plain sight, the utilities are a perfect example. There are 100 million homes in America. There are about 1,700 utilities in America. So they have captive markets. But in return for that captive market, the law says, need to invest a certain amount per year in upgrading that power line, in changing out that turbine, in making sure you transition from coal to wind or whatever. Just as an example, upgrading power lines in the United States over the next decade is a $2 trillion proposition. These 1,700 organizations have to spend, I think it's a quarter of a trillion dollars a year just to change the power lines. That is why, even though it costs nothing to make energy, you are paying double every five, every seven or eight years. It's CapEx and OpEx of a very brittle old infrastructure. It's like you trying to build an app and being forced to build your own data center. And you say, but wait, I just want to write to AWS. I just want to use GCP. I just want to move on. All that complexity is solved for me. And some law says, no, you can't. You got to use it. So that's what consumers are dealing with, but it's also what industrial and manufacturing organizations, it's what we all deal with. So how do we get rid ourselves of this old infrastructure that we're paying so for? So the thing that's happening today, which I think is, this is why I think it's the most important trend right now in the world, is that 100 million homeowners are each going to become their own little power plant and compete with these 1,700 utilities. And uh, that is in the United great, States or globally? No, just, just deal with the United States for a second because I think it's easier to see here. 100 million homes, solar panel on the roof. And by the way, just to make it clear, the sun doesn't need to shine, right? These, these panels now work where you have these UV bands that can actually extrapolate beyond the visible spectrum. So they're usable in all weather conditions. And a simple system can support you collecting enough power to not just run your functional day-to-day -day life, but then to contribute what's left over back into the grid for Google's data center or Facebook's data center where you get a small check. The cost is going to zero. How obvious is this to people? You're making a sound? Okay. So because this is a pretty profound prediction, if the cost is, is any go to zero, that, I mean, the compute, the cost of compute going to zero, I can... So the cost of compute going to zero is can kind of understand, but the energy based, seems like a radical prediction of yours. Well, but, it's just it's just naturally what's happening, right? Now, now let me let me give you a, diff, a different way of explaining this. If you look at any system, there's a really important thing that happens. It's what 
uh, Clay Christensen calls crossing the chasm. If you explained it numerically, here's how I would explain it to you, Lex. If you introduce a disruptive product, typically what happens is the first three to 5% of people are these zealous believers. Mm -hmm. And they ignore all the logical reasons why this product doesn't make any sense. Because they believe in the proposition of the future and they buy it. The problem is at 5%. If you want a product to get to mass market, you have one of two choices, which is you either bring the cost down low enough or the feature set becomes so compelling that even at a high price point. An example of the latter is the iPhone. The iPhone today, the 14 iPhone, costs more than the original iPhone. It's probably doubled in price over the last 14 or 15 years, but we view it as an essential element of what we need in our daily lives. It turns out that battery EVs and solar panels are an example of the former. Because people like President Biden, with all of these subsidies, have now introduced so much money for people to just do this, where it is a money-making proposition for 100 million homes. And what you're seeing as a result are all of these companies who want to get in front of that trend why? Because they want to own the relationship with 100 million homeowners. They want to manage the power infrastructure. Amazon, Home Depot, Lowe's, you know, you can just name the company. So if you do that and you control that relationship, they're going to show you, they're going to, you know, for example, Amazon will probably say, if you're a member of Prime, we'll stick the panels on your house for free. We'll do all the work for you for free. And it's just a feature of being a member of Prime. And we'll manage all that energy for you. It makes so much sense. And it is mathematically accretive for Amazon to do that. It's not accretive for the existing energy industry because they get blown up. It's extremely accretive for peace and prosperity. If you think the number of wars we fight over natural resources, take them all off the table if we don't need energy from abroad. There's no reason to fight. <laughs> You'd have to find a reason to fight. Um, meaning, sorry, there, there'd be a moral reason to fight, but the last number of wars that we fought uh, were not as much rooted in morality as they were rooted in. Yeah, it feels like they were very much rooted in uh, conflict over, over resources, yeah. energy specifically. You know who will benefit the most with this revolution in the energy business? The companies in the renewable energy business. Tesla is one of them. BYD is another one. Harvesting energy with space solar panels could power Earth 24-7. Beaming clean power back to Earth could be a game changer. Solar power has been a key part of humanity's clean energy repertoire. We spread masses of sunlight harvesting panels on solar fields and many people power their homes by decorating their roofs with the rectangles. But there's a caveat to this wonderful power source. Solar panels can't collect energy at night. To work at peak efficiency, they need as much sunlight as possible. So to maximize this sun catcher's performance, researchers are toying with a plan to send them to a place where the sun never sets, outer space. Theoretically, if a bunch of solar panels were blasted into orbit, they'd soak up the sun even on the foggiest days and the darkest nights, storing an enormous amount of power. If that power were wirelessly beamed down to Earth, our planet could breathe in renewable clean energy 24-7. That would significantly reduce our carbon footprint. This is a structural prototype of Caltech's lighter solar panel. The increase in effectiveness really comes from the fact that by putting them in space, they get plenty of intense sunlight because the sunlight doesn't have to come through the atmosphere you can see here an example of a power station in orbit. But for now this is not possible in an economical way. Because to send solar panels in space today is very expensive with current rockets. Again, one of Elon Musk's companies are well positioned here, SpaceX. I think if a company can do this, SpaceX would be that company. Because they are working on a very cost effective way of travel with their new type of rocket, Starship. We have a long way to make solar power plants in space. Let's get back to Earth a little bit, where a team from University of New South Wales, Sydney, has made a major breakthrough in renewable energy technology by producing electricity from so-called nighttime solar power. Nighttime solar technology can now deliver 
power in the dark. Innovative research from University of New South Wales, Sydney team shows Earth's radiant infrared heat can be used to generate electricity even after the sun has set. The team generated electricity from heat radiated as infrared light in the same way as the Earth cools by radiating into space at night. A semiconductor device called a thermoradiative diode composed of materials found in night vision goggles was used to generate power from the emission of infrared light. Although the amount of power generated at this stage is very small, around 100,000 times less than that supplied by a solar panel, the researchers believe the results can be improved in the future. I'd like to know your opinion on all of this. Please leave a comment below. If you like this video, please smash that like button so that other people like you see this video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. I appreciate all of you that watch my videos. See you next time.